Matt Corral. Let's dive in a little bit on the Ole Miss quarterback. He's visiting a handful of teams this week, so it's a good time to talk about him. Carolina, Pittsburgh, New Orleans, Philly, and Atlanta. And as we get closer to the draft, the conversation around Corral's changed a bit, right? He's falling on a lot of boards, but as we know, so much time for these things to change. A crucial week for him visiting in person with these teams. And of course, a lot of it has to do with the injury that he did deal with, but let's focus on the on-field play. He played in an offense that featured a lot of quick quick passes, screens, pretty hefty dosage of RPOs, some context on that, of course, we'll get to in a minute with Dan, but last season, 24% of Corral's dropbacks came on RPOs. That's the highest rate by any qualified quarterback at a Power 5 school. Corral also finished the season ranked third among Power 5 guys in both passing yards and completions on RPOs. So, Matt, I mentioned that he has fallen on some people's boards. What is going on with Matt Corral and, and the way he's being mocked right now in this upcoming draft? Well, Laura, it's that. I think everyone now looks around and says this is not a player who's been in a pro-style system, even though we've kind of stopped saying that about quarterbacks because there's so much development that happens in the league. But you look at Matt Corral, that Lane Kiffin offense, it has not produced a lot of NFL caliber guys. So that is one of the questions of can he play in an NFL-style offense where he has to drop back and read the full field? That's one of the keys here is a lot of single reads from Matt Corral. He's a little bit undersized as well. So while we see guys like Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati moving up, I think the other side of that, Dan, is someone like Matt Corral sure. has to move down. Yeah, I mean, so to move down, you have to start relatively high. And I think when you watch some of his tape, there's – Parts of it that are relatively intriguing. You see, athletically, he's explosive. Mm -hmm. You watch him operate those RPOs, and we can't take it for granted how difficult it is to operate those, but also we've seen those become a part of the NFL. The challenge, and Matt, yeah. you kind of referenced that, is these guys become just strictly one-read guys. Hey, you're going to catch this snap, you're going to read that safety, and if he drops down, rip it. But then there's also opportunities that he misses throws. Watch this post up top. I mean, you should be letting mm. that post Ooh, go. Baby. Both those safeties cut across her. That is a play that... I mean, just being honest, that's football 101. That's high school football. Post, deep cross, and check down. That's one clip. I can show you 20 of them where he misses that read. And you start to question, all right, so I love the aspect of you operating the RPOs. Why are there so many misses? And I'll take it to a step further. And I'm sure over the next couple of weeks, we'll kind of show on the touch screen how this right. happens even more. Not only are there misses, but when you do get to your second or third read, the accuracy goes from average mm -hmm. to way below yeah. average. Yeah. And I think that's really what makes him uh, that intriguing yet difficult evaluation at that spot. Mina. Yeah, I think, Dan, you nailed it. He's kind of an unknown to me. Um, yeah which is, I guess, surprising because, you know, there's a lot of football, a lot of plays to watch. And there are a lot of things on tape that you like. Um, you know, the accuracy over the middle of the field, the quick release. You alluded yep. to his scrambling ability. He can create. But what's unclear about all of those positive attributes is how they translate at the next level. Because in the NFL, he's going to have to go past his first read far more often. He's going to be, have to be better at handling pressure. Uh, I think he had the lowest QBR of any of the top five quarterbacks when blitzed. And if he does scramble the way he did in college, he is going to be punished at his size, which is concerning, I think, given his injury history. So he's a difficult projection because uh, he really is an unknown, and that's something NFL teams are going to have to process over the next couple weeks. Okay, y'all, I hate doing this. I hate doing this because these kids are getting ready for the time of their life, but let's just be honest, right? Matt Carell is a developmental quarterback, and we would not be having this conversation if it was elite quarterbacks in this draft about why he's sure. falling. That's the reality of it. When you turn this tape on, you see a guy that's going to take a lot of work to develop on the next level, like a lot of these guys in this draft. And we understand that he played at Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin system, and we've watched Lane Kiffin from Alabama get quarterbacks to throw for 36 4,600 yards, and then they go and they try out to be a running back on the next level. So he's dealing with a lot of things, a lot of con uh, preconceived notions about who you are in this particular offense. But the reality is, and I hate to feel like I'm just shining down because this guy's getting ready no. for the draft and he's excited. The reality is this class is making us have a conversation about quarterbacks, in particular like Matt Corral, that would be third, fourth, or fifth round guys if it was strong quarterback candidates in this draft like we've seen in years past. 
You know, Dan, I, I will point this out because all of you are taking a bit of the negative side, which I understand, right? That's what we, it's our job. We got to point some things out. He was injured through a lot of the season. Yeah. That, yeah. that is maybe even another negative, but it, it speaks yeah. to maybe why some of the misses happened at times. Sure. I would also point out, too, that one of the main things we know about Matt Corral, which is p a piece of the conversation, is that he's incredibly tough and he's a guy that mm -hmm. his team wants to rally around. You're going to tell me he's not. <laughs> That's Why? a negative in the NFL, though. Tough what do you mean? at the yeah. quarterback yeah. position. Yeah. His size. Yeah. Your availability yeah. is yeah. a huge deal. Yeah. And, and, I mean, I, I remember being a young player in the NFL, and I scrambled against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I wanted to prove how tough I was, so I put my head down to try to run through Daryl Smith, who was a linebacker for the Jaguars, and he absolutely laid me out, Sleepy. and he stood over me. Sleepy. Not in a disrespectful manner. He's like, you can't do that in this league. And I think he's got to, you know, if we're going to sit here and yeah, I went to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else, like, what, I think if we're going to sit here and have this conversation and, and tout the athleticism, it's yeah. the, you know, it's the Carson Wentz and stuff a little bit, too. It's yeah. like, how smart are you going to be? You. I want everyone to understand why we make such a big deal about the inability to kind of get off of number one. I don't care how good you are throwing the ball to your first read. That doesn't happen in the NFL. The right. NFL defenses, yeah. as once they learn you, they make you get the two. They take away your one. They make you get the three. How good you can do that determines or is one of the determining factors how good you can actually be at that position long term in that's in this league. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.